Good morning and welcome to this first uh, webinar of this year. My name is Jose Garcia. I am the director of R&D and quality of the Segna Group. As you already know, Segna Group is a business group formed by five companies with uh, production plants in Spain, Italy and Turkey with more than 50 years of experience in production of natural food color. Today, we are going to talk in this webinar about a question that greatest interest for the food industry, such as is the application of the food coloring in a relationship and the relationship with the human health. Specifically, we will talk about the caramel colors and the reduction of the content in 4-methyl imidazole. This webinar is expected to last approximately one hour and it will, it will be divided in three different parts. First, our collaborator Emmanuel Pedrasini is going to talk about caramel color. What is it? What kind of caramel color it is? How do I made? And what application they have? Emmanuel is doctor in food uh, technology, food science and technology from the University of Milan. He has more than 16 years of experience in applied research in different food companies and since 2040 He's the R&D director of the Signa Italy and one of the, our greatest experts in the development of caramel color. After the second speaker will be Juan Mario San. Juan Mario is doctor in food science and technology too from the Polytechnic University of Valencia. Juan Mario has worked in different food companies and public research organizations. And he has published several articles in different scientific journals and he has collaborated in writing chapters of different food technology books. Since 2015, Juan Mario works in the development of the new products at Segna Group headquarters in Spain. Juan Mario is going to talk about the presence of formethyl imidazole in caramel color, related regulations, and he will present the results of the project developed by our company in order to reduce the presence of formethyl imidazole in tip 3 and 4 caramel C and D colors. Finally, at the end, we will have time for questions. Approximately 15 minutes, we will answer the questions that you sent through the chat. I remind that this webinar is going to be recorded, so later the recording will be at your disposal. In addition, in the coming days, you will receive a copy of the documentation used in this webinar, of the slides we are going to use. I hope you find the presentation interesting and enjoy them. With nothing else to add, I live with my colleague, Emmanuel Pedrazini. Good morning and welcome to this webinar from me too. In this session, we will see what is caramel color, it's the different classes, and finally, we will see a brief overview of the main application of caramel in the food industry. Caramel color can be defined as an amorphous brown to brownish material in liquid or powder form, produced by eating carbohydrate under a controlled temperature and pressure, in the presence of small amounts of food grade catalyst. Caramels are typically brown, however, depending on the manufacturing process and on the different chemicals used to promote caramelization, they may have quite different shades. Shades is determined by a number called U index that derives from a ratio of uh, the absorbance at two different wavelengths. Either the U index value, or rather is the caramel while a low U-index value means a caramel with a deep black-brown shade. Typically, U-index decreases from E150A to E150D. So, E150A are the reddest caramel, while E150D are the darkest one. Caramel colors are divided into four classes depending on different chemicals used to promote caramelization. 
the first class, named E150A class 1 or plain caramel color, is usually perceived as the most natural among different classes of caramel. That's why, to promote caramelization, no sulfite or ammonia compounds are allowed, but just small amounts of food grade acid bases or other salts are permitted. The resulting caramel is characterized by a slight negative ionic charge and its shade typically ranges from yellow to red brown. To this class belong brown sugar too. Brown sugar are produced by eating carbohydrates simply. No chemicals are allowed nor to promote caramelization nor to adjust the final pH. Consequently, brown sugar corresponds to the definition of both food ingredient and food color. When the main purpose of using brown sugar is to give taste or aroma to the final product, then cake can be considered as an ingredient, avoiding the E number on the label. On the other side, when the main purpose of using brown sugar is to give color to the final product, then they have to be considered as a food additive and labeled as E150A. E150B, class 2 or caustic sulfide caramel colors, are produced by eating carbohydrates in the presence of sulfide compounds. No ammonia compounds are allowed during the caramelization process. The resulting product is characterized by a negative ionic charge and its shades range from yellow to dark red brown. E150C, class 3 or ammonia caramel colors, are produced by eating carbohydrates in the presence of uh, ammonia compounds, while no sulfide compounds are allowed. This is the only class of caramels characterized by a positive ionic charge, and this makes those caramels suitable, for example, in uh, products uh, with an high isoelectric point, where a negative charge caramel will uh, cause uh, uh, precipitation or flocculation in the final product. Typical shade of caramel E150C ranges from light brown to dark red brown. E150D, class 4 or sulfite ammonia caramel colors, are produced by eating carbohydrates in the presence of both sulfite and ammonia compounds. The resulting product is characterized by a very strong negative ionic charge that makes those caramel characterized by a very high acid resistance. Typical shade of caramel E150D ranges from light brown to deep black brown. Those caramels are usually divided into single and double strands depending on the color intensity. Moreover, in recent years, low 4 MEI class 4 caramel colors have been, have been developed. <coughs> Let's see now an overview of the main application of caramel color in the food industry. Let's start from soft drinks and in particular from carbonated soft drinks. Those beverages are characterized by a very high acidity and low pH. Consequently, acid proof caramel color E150B D have to be used in order to avoid the precipitation of color in the final product. E150D not only give color to the beverage, but are also added to improve foaming effect and sometimes aroma. When we speak about soft drinks containing milk, because of the neutral pH of milk, caramel color E150D used to give color to those products needs a higher pH than usual, approximately around 5, in order to avoid flocculation and uh, the presence of uh, unde undesired green tone. Finally, in tea drinks, brown sugar and caramel color E150D are the best option because of their high hue yellow tone that give and standardize color in the final product and give the typical shade or desired on teas. Caramel color and brown sugar are widely used also in uh, many different uh, alcoholic beverages like whiskey, brandy and other liquors, but also in vermouth and other wine-based drinks. In those uh, beverages, they both give color and homogenize it among different batches. 
Moreover, the use of black sugar not only gives color, but also adds its typical characteristic taste on the final product. The choice among different caramels and brown sugars may depend on color intensity and desired shade in the final product, and above all, on the chemical physical characteristics of the, of the drinks, mainly pH, isolating point, and the alcohol content. Caramel color and brown sugar are widely used also in bakery, confectionery, pastry, and biscuits in order to increase and homogenize the brown color, color of the final product. In this case, both brown sugar, caramel color E150C and D work well in this purpose. E150D are intended to give to the final product a deep brown black tone, while E150C give a more reddish brown tone. Finally, brown sugar confer a yellowish brown shade and also a peculiar flavor to the final product. Both liquid and powder form are good solution for this application. Powder form are intended to be used in a process where anhydrous conditions are necessary. Caramels, colors, and brown, uh, and brown sugar are used also in different kinds of pet food, dry, white, wet, and pit treats, in order to improve color and odor and taste and make the final product more appetizing. Brown sugar E150C and E150D work well in this application. The choice may depend on, again, the desired shade and eventually on the clean label purpose. Both brown sugar and caramel colors result stable in heat processing condition necessary during the production of pet food. Regarding beer, this beverage is characterized by an high isolatory point, so a positive charge caramel E150C is the best solution in order to avoid the flocculation of the color in the final product. E150C are used in different stages of brewing with the aim to achieve a standardization of color and give greater transparency to the final product in order to avoid the precipitation of suspended protein and also to give color to beer without adding the typical astringent flavor associated to, to dark mold. Caramel color E150D and brown sugar are also added to chocolate coffee and toffee ice cream. However, brown sugar is the best option because of its shade, color intensity, and also for the clean label opportunity. Brown sugar are also added to ice cream cones in order to enhance and stabilize color and give their peculiar taste too. Finally, brown sugar are also used in dairy desserts to give taste and improve the aspect of the final product without affecting a clean label opportunity. Liquid and powder caramel are widely used also in different kinds of sauces. E150C and E150D both work well in this application, and the choice depends on the desired shade, E150C confer a more reddish shade, while E150D are intended to be used in product that needs a more deep brown tone. Moreover, soil content of the sauce is another important discriminant to choose the best color. In this case, in fact, when a salt percentage is above 20 to 25%, E150C is necessary to avoid the flocculation and uh, the formation of undesired green tone on the final product. Caramel color is also used to color balsamic vinegar. Balsamic vinegar is characterized by an high organic acidity and a very low pH. So, as for soft drinks, acid-proof E150D double strands caramel is the best solution in order to avoid the precipitation of color. E150D in this case not only give color, but are also recommended to avoid foam formation during the, process, the production process and uh, as a vinegar stabilizer. Because of the, increase, the increasing of demand for alternative to E150D, 
Secna Group is now able to offer a specific caramel color E150A with a good acid stability suitable in a vinegar application. The advantage of using E150A is that this caramel is sulfite and above all 4-MEI free. However, it is important to say that the acid resistance of E150A is not comparable with E150D. So, some differences in organic acid composition deriving from different sources of raw material used to produce vinegar may slightly affect the stability of this caramel in the final product. Our recommendation is to test uh, this caramel any time uh, vinegar raw material uh, changes. Burn sugar and caramel colors are widely used also to confer the final color to candies and licorice. In candies, both burn sugar and all classes of caramel colors are suitable, and the choice depends on the final shade desired in the final product. More deep black brown with E150D, reddish brown with E150C, or yellowish tone with burn sugar and E150B. Moreover, powder caramels are the best solution in a confined coating in order to maintain the anhydrous condition necessary in the production process. Finally, in black licorice, a double strand caramel color E150D is the best solution in order to achieve the high color intensity desired on the final product. Caramel colors are widely used also in meat application in order to enhance color and appeal of the final product or to increase the smoke and grill effect of the meat. In this case, both E150C and E150D result suitable in meat application. E150D are the best solution when the main purpose is to give a deep black-brown color and when it is necessary to penetrate with color into the meat. E150C are the best solution when it is necessary to give a reddish brown shade to the final product, when the main purpose is to color the exterior surface of meat, and when meat contains a nice soil percentage. Finally, powder caramel colors are the best option in coloring meat spice blends. So thank you very much for your kind attention. And now I give the floor to my colleague, Juan Mario, that will speak about uh, caramel color and four methylimeters oil. Thank you very much. Hello, good morning. Thank you very much for introducing me and thank you, you to all for joining us today in this webinar. I'm going to talk about the presence of 4-methylimidazole in caramel colors, the actual trends and the possible new alternatives that we have developed here in Segna Natural Ingredients Group. Here, I show you a brief overview about the contents of the presentation. First of all, we will talk about the current society's concern for health. We will continue explaining what 4-MEI is and the controversy that has arisen about this substance. Then, we will define the legislative aspects and the current trends. And finally, we will explain the project that has been developed in our company with the intention of reducing the amount of 4-MEI in our caramels. Society is increasingly concerned about their state of health. The latest studies show the most common and lethal diseases, and since some years ago, it's known that some diseases such as cancer, vascular accidents, or diabetes have their roots in improper feeding. In fact, people know that good health begins with a rational and balanced consumption of healthy and safe food. And of course, free of contaminants or potentially toxic compounds. 
Contaminants can be present in food due to environmental factors and certain cultivation practices. But there are others that are produced during the food elaboration process. At certain levels, these substances can be harmful to human health. And to ensure that this don't, ha this don't happen, health authorities set thresholds that ensure that food we eat is completely safe. Some of the contaminants whose presence we must control in food are pesticides, heavy metals, nitrates, dioxins, mycotoxins, acrylamide, bisphenol A, phthalates, or 4 methyl imidazol. But uh, should we worry about 4 methyl imidazol? Why is there so much expectation with 4 MEI? 4 MEI has been generated some controversy since its possible effect on health was studied. Due to doubts about this possible toxicity, in recent years, multiple studies have been carried out by different organizations and international public health authorities aimed at clarifying its effect on human health. These studies have been especially oriented at knowing the average consumption doses, the maximum documented doses, and the levels of presence in food from which there is some risk in their consumption. 4-MEI is an organic chemical compound derived from imidazole. It can be produced in different ways, synthetically, in industrial applications such as the manufacture of drugs and chemicals, fermentatively, and by heating sugars through Meyer reactions. But it is important to highlight that it is generated naturally when cooking food of all kinds, and therefore it is found in many foods cooked in our homes. And of course, humans have consumed it for generations. It is usually present, for example, in roasted food such as grilled meats, in coffee, and in caramel colors class 3 or E150C and class 4 or E150D. The two types of caramels that have nitrogen sources in their formulation. In our case, 4-MEI is produced during the heating of carbohydrates in the presence of nitrogen compounds, when the carbonyl groups of the sugars react with them. The concentration of this substance in caramel colors is usually parts per million, ranging from 40 up to 300 mg per kilo. The greater or lesser content depends on many factors of the production process, including the pH, temperature, and receipt. There are studies carried out by different research groups using different species of animals, evaluating the levels of 4-MEI in plasma and in different organs of the animal, as well as body's ability to eliminate it by itself. Thus, for example, in experiments with rats, 90% of 4-MEI was excreted in just five hours. And the results of similar experiments using sheep allowed us to observe that in relatively short periods, 98% was of the substance was eliminated. However, the controversy persists due to the publication of the other studies that appear to show toxic effects in model animals in the presence of high doses of 4-MEI. As of today, the current regulatory specifications applicable to these caramel colors allow such dyes to contain up to 250 mg per kilo of this compound based on color intensity. This is so given that, according to health authorities indicate, there is not enough scientific evidence to state that their presence at this level or lower carries risk to human health. However, and while the situation is clarified, Segna Natural Ingredients Group has tried to optimize the production process to obtain caramel colors with much lower levels of 4-MEI, meeting consumer demand and a policy of maximum requirement as far as food security is concerned. As we have advanced previously, 4-MEI is synthesized for industrial use in a high degree of purity and concentration. So, in this work environments, a first study was started a decade ago to evaluate the human health risk against exposure. 
This was addressed within the framework of the US National Toxicology Program. This two years study saw a possible carcinogenic activity in male and female mice based on a higher incidence of alveolar of or bronchiolar neoplans. This study was the origin of addressing the presence of 4-MEI in first the Proposition 65 of California, which is a list that contains a wide range of naturally occurring and synthetic chemicals that are known to cause cancer or birth defects. And second, the classification as a 2P substance by the International Agency for Research on Cancer, indicating its possible carcinogenicity. Given this situation, at the moment, two points of view coexists. From one hand, given there is not enough scientific evidence to state that the presence carries risk to human health, the EFSA and the FDA say that uh, regulations are enough and caramel colors tip C and D can be used safely in food. But on the other hand, consumer associations and other social agents express their concern in this regard and ask for further investigation to be carried out in this field until the existence of any risk is qualified. Although neither the FDA or nor the EFSA have changed their guidelines or the previously existing regulations as a result of these studies, they did response to consumers indicating that dietary changes were not necessary on the basis of the evidence currently provided. In any case, it is expected that more news results and new works related to this topic will continue to appear over the next few years. In conclusion, with regard to the regulations applicable in Europe on the presence of 4-MEI in caramel colors, the reference standard establishes a maximum limit of 4-MEI of 250 mg per kilo on an equivalent basis at an intensity of color of 0.1 in caramel colors E150C and E150D. And uh, the GICFA further limits the amount of this compound in E150C to 200 mg per kilo. Despite all we are talking about, consumers want to go beyond the strict compliance with law. With the increase in purchasing power and life expectancy in global terms, there is a growing interest in health. The consumers want to be informed of everything that affects their diet and to be able to decide what they consume. This implies, consequently, a greater interest of society for nutritional and biomedical research aimed at greater knowledge of the role of food human health, as well as increasing pressure for, of, from customers associations and media to clarify all those issues related to food security. Regarding the case of the presence of 4-MEI in caramel colors, the revision of maximum limits recommended by the Food Chemical Codex has been particularly relevant after the implementation of the Proposition 65 list from California. On August 30, on 2018, this list entered into force for all purposes, so that the companies thereafter must clearly identify in their labeling the chemicals included in the list if they exceeded the levels considered acceptable. For its part, the FCC addressed this review after numerous requests from different organizations to review the maximum level of the 4-MEI in caramel color. And it has been relatively recent on the 1st of December of 2018, when the Food Chemical Codex has established a maximum limit for 4 MEI of 125 mg per kilo for this type of products. During this process, it is important to highlight that the International Association of Caramel Colors Pollution Companies and European Co companies represented by Utica actively participated with the FCC to help identify the new level. And in view of this situation, Segna Natural Ingredients Group decided during the 2018 to initiate a strategic research line for drastically reducing the presence of 4-MEI in all its references of caramel color. 
And as of today, all of, all of our references meet the new criterion maximum limit. This project implied an important investment in human and material resources and an effort of our organization as a whole that to date we can affirm that has culminated successfully. We studied the different existing technological alternatives to develop the new caramel color formulations. For this, an extensive research of scientific technical information was carried out that allowed us to identify different ways. These options were contrasted with the experience of more than 50 years of work in the development and manufacture of caramel colors of our company. From these reflections, a proposal of potential solutions emerged, priorized by its technical and economical feasibility. Essentially, the project was carried out in three phases. First, the proposals for process conditions and formulation in our pilot reactor were tested. Raw materials, intermediate products, and final prototypes were analyzed following the strictest quality controls. All the usual physicochemical parameters were analyzed and other issues that could affect the composition of the final product in any way were also considered. Of course, special care was taken in the quantitative determination of 4-MEI levels. Once the results obtained at pilot scale were satisfactory, and after the complete characterization of the prototypes, we were able to begin the second phase of industrial development. During this phase, the new formulations and operating conditions were tested. Due to the large volume of industrial reactors necessary for processing, the readjustment of the operation required numerous tests until the desired result was achieved, with a process time, efficiency, and acceptable cost. Similarly, after the completion of each of the industrial adaptation tests, a complete physical chemical analysis of the manufactured product was performed. Here below in the slide, we can see some of the examples of three caramels in which the amount of 4-MEI was drastically decreased, maintaining all other parameters constant comparing to the old versions. Finally, the third and final phase was the preparation of technical documentation by our quality assurance team. New products had to pass all the usual quality controls of our company in order to properly document their production and performance. Finally, in this slide, I will show you the main conclusions about this presentation. 4-MEI is a compound that is present in a lot of products, among, among which are the, the caramel colors E150C and E150D. The level of 4-MEI that caramel colors have to comply with current reg legislation is a maximum of 250 mg per kilo. However, due, due to the existing pressure by consumers, FCC recommended a reduction to values below 125 mg per kilo. In any case, there is still not enough scientific evidence to state that they present at levels lower than 250 mg per kilo carries risk to human health. However, and while situation is clarified, Segna Natural Ingredient Groups has developed a research and development project during 2018 and part of 2019 I met to reducing the levels of 4-MEI in all its references without affecting the technical characteristics of the products or their, stab or their stability and applicability. This project has been finally successfully completed. And as of today, we can say that all of our references meet the new criterion maximum limit of 125 mg per kilo. Well, this was all of our, um, my presentation. And I just, just want to say thank you very much for your kind attention.
Well, thank you very much, uh, Juan Mario and Emmanuel, too. Uh, next, we have uh, 15 minutes to answer the questions that the attendees you have sent to us during the morning, during the presentation. Uh, I remind you that you can continue sending your questions using the chat system. Uh, anyway, if due to the limited time of this webinar, any question remains without an answer, don't, don't uh, worry because we, are, we will answer by email in a few days. Well, the first uh, question we received is addressed to Emmanuel Pedrasini. Question is, uh, uh, can you consider that caramel color is uh, a natural product? Well, this is a, a good question. In fact, this is a quite difficult topic to address because, for example, in USA and Europe, there is still no legal definition of the term natural. For sure, we can say that the caramels are not artificial colors because no chemical synthesis occurs during the manufacturing process. On the other side, raw material used to produce caramels are subjected to chemical modification and the resulting product is not natural occurring in uh, nature. So um, we can conclude that caramels have to be considered as a separate category, which doesn't belong nor to artificial nor to natural colors. I can thank you. Thank you very much, Emmanuel. Well, I have a, a second question. Uh, this question, I think, uh, is for Emmanuel too. Uh, how can we choose the, the best color for our product? This means, do you have any guides that can help to the consumers? Well, uh, let me say that, um, in my opinion, the best way to choose uh, the most suitable caramel for uh, your products is to ask uh, for our support and our suggestion. In fact, even if uh, it is possible to give general indication for different application, and uh, you can find them in our website, uh, each uh, food product may have its own characteristics. Uh, so depending on ingredients, chemical, physical properties, uh, uh, color and the shade desired, a caramel that is uh, suitable for a food stuff could be not uh, uh, the best option for another similar product. So my conclusion is that uh, you please don't hesitate to contact us anytime you need any kind of suggestion for uh, our, your products. You, we will find together the best solution uh, for your needs. Okay, well, uh, there, are, there is more, uh, more questions. Well, the, the third question is uh, about formethylimidazole. Uh, then Juan Mario, please. If you can answer the question is, uh, is formethyl uh, imidazole carcinogenic? Uh, from what dose it is dangerous? Wh what the European Union say about it? Well, this is three questions in, in only one. What is, it is car carcinogenic? Uh, what dose it is dangerous? Uh, what the European Union say about it? Okay, uh, well, as we have already said in the presentation, there is a lot of controversy about the possibility, possible carcinogenicity of this compound. But uh, there have been many studies on this. And, uh, however, there is no consensus in the, the scientific community. So at the levels found in the caramel colors seems to have no such effect. And uh, about the second and third question that you uh, asked, asked me, the legislation in the European Union and the USA is very clear and allows caramel colors to contain up to 250 milligrams per kilo in their composition. So with this in mind, there is no reason to believe that uh, there is any immediate or short-term danger presented by 4-MEI at levels expected in food from the use of caramel coloring. Well, we have another question. For question is... Uh, I think the best is uh, for, for Emmanuel Pedrasini is, uh, can I simply substitute the type of uh, C and D caramel colors uh, that we use currently 
using a larger amount of type A caramel color? Uh, well, um, the answer is uh, it depends. Uh, in fact, uh, um, we have to say that there are some applications in which uh, E150A can replace uh, E150C and D. But uh, in other cases, this is not possible. In fact, uh, for instance, uh, in beer, E150A cannot replace E150C because of its negative ionic charge. Or another example, in, in soft drinks, E150A cannot replace E150D because of their lack of uh, acid resistance. So uh, the conclusion is that uh, for some application this is possible and for other no. Anyway, uh, you have always to consider that E150A has a quite different shade compared with E150C and above all with E150D. So in the replacement, you have to consider that you, you will obtain a slight different tone for your, your final product. Well, one uh, additional question. Uh, this question is for Juan Mario. Uh, do the new products the same intensity of color and behavior as the old reference had? Yes, of course, yes. Uh... The first condition before starting the project was, uh, of course, keep intact the characteristics of the original caramels. Uh, the new caramels have to replace the old ones, of course, and uh, will be used under the same conditions. All the physicochemical characteristics of the caramels have to be equal. And uh, in addition, the compatibility and the stability also. Uh, and this uh, could not be affected. And uh, of course, uh, we did so. Well, another question is to, I think it's to Emanuele. Uh, the attendees say, are, are we able to produce caramel color for coloring and flowering too? Uh, this meaning in, the, in one only product? Well, um, you have to consider that uh, cata catalyzed caramel, so caramels produced uh, by uh, adding uh, chemicals to promote caramelization <coughs> are intended to give color to the final product. In this kind of products, the flavor is very weak. Uh, in some cases, a little bit of uh, aroma can be conferred to this product, but this is a very, very slight uh, no tone. On the other side, uh, we can consider brown sugar uh, for this uh, purpose. In fact, brown sugar that um, give uh, color to the final product also give a taste to, to it, even because brown sugar uh, have not a very high color intensity. And so usually the amount uh, added to the final product is uh, more consistent than uh, uh, respect to caramel colors. So, this kind of product both give color and taste to the final product. Thank you very much. Well, another question. Uh, this time is for Juan Mario. How do you re how do you reduce the, the level of formethylimidazole? Why not eliminate it completely? Uh, are you planning to do so in the future? Well, uh, it's a good question. Um, in the project, we use different strategies depending on the type of caramels. The levels of 4-MEI in caramel colors are related to the nitrogen content of the product, and uh, maybe um, it will seem obvious to reduce this amount, uh, the amount of the nitrogen decreasing uh, its levels. However, the nitrogen is essential to achieve the desired characteristics of caramel colors. That is why uh, in Sengna Natural Ingredients Group, have to had to find other alternatives to reduce the content of this compound without affecting the characteristics of the caramels. And about the second uh, question, um, the complete elimination of 4-MEI is not possible, at least at the moment. We have uh, already commented that is during the caramelization process in the presence of uh, nitrogen compounds when the 4-MEI is produced. In any case, uh, Segna Natural Ingredients Group has been able to reduce almost completely 
the content of this substance in uh, some of the, its references. Well, thank you, uh, Juan Mario. Well, unfortunately, uh, I'm very sorry, but th there is no time for more questions. If you have any additional question, I remind you that you can send them to our email address. Uh, we will gladly answer them in the next few days. Uh, I remind that you uh, will receive the webinar record and documentation in a few days. And I hope you liked the presentation, you liked the, 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 the soup that we have discussed today. And you see, see you again in, in future events like this. Well, thank you very much for your, for your presence. And thank you very much to, to attend our webinar. As I hope you see you soon. Bye.